Irish music has a long and rich history that has its roots in the Highland folk tradition. It is notable for its vitality, energy and contagious joy, which is often reflected in the atmosphere of Irish pubs. Pubs in Ireland have long been meeting places for music and cultural lovers and have become world famous as a meeting place for those looking to enjoy an evening of traditional Irish music. <laughs> Irish music in pubs is often played by groups of local musicians who perform in informal sessions. A music session in a pub is a time when talented musicians come together to play together with no realists or scores. Music is transmitted orally from one generation to the next, and this tradition of musical sharing has helped keep Irish musical culture alive. Typical instruments used in traditional Irish music include violin, accordion, Bodran, an Irish drum, acoustic guitar, butsuki and tin whistle, and Irish music is characterized by lively rhythms, intricate melodies and a strong sense of improvisation. The songs often tell stories of love, adventures and the daily life of the Irish. In Irish pubs, music sessions can involve both professional and amateur musicians, creating a convivial atmosphere in which everyone is invited to participate. It is common for pub customers to join the music with palmas, songs and dances. Sessions can last late into the night and are characterized by great energy and passion from musicians and the audience. Irish music in pubs is much more than just a performance. It's a shared experience that creates a sense of community and connection between musicians and audience. It's a way of immerse yourself in Irish cultures. Let yourself be overwhelmed by the joy of music and dance to the rhythm of traditional yig, reel and polka. <laughs> Monuments, museum, natural landscape, large and small cities. To see and to experience in Ireland, every trip can become an adventure and leave behind memories that are hard to forget. But then that's not all. Irish communities, wherever they are, are fascinated by murals and graffiti, and they are, and they are others, the street artists who have now become particularly influential in the global panorama of visual arts who have for some time now transformed the Nordic country in a um, gigantic canvas. Erkut uh, did uh, this graffiti because it uh, represented his totem or the elephant. He has broken tusks and was carried in his arms by a boy with a sad look. And uh, uh, who is Erkut? In reality, they are because it is an artistic duo founded in 2004. Uh, music geniuses, uh, groups of artists uh, who have made their country great uh, or true legends uh, who speak uh, to the world through songs. It doesn't matter if the music respects uh, traditional counts or not, uh, even the most famous musicians on the planet uh, you too have dealt um, with Irish uh, demis uh, without ne necessarily resorting to folkloric sounds. Adam Clayton is an Irish born British artist, bassist, member, and manager before Paul McGuinness of the rock group U2. Monavox, a couple David Hewson, was born in Dublin on May 10, 1960. The Irish singer is the frontman of the famous rock band U2. Damien Rice is an international artist who managed to cross the borders of Ireland with an unmistakable sound. In the city of Dublin there are many famous monuments. The Melly Malone statue takes pride of place on South Coast, 
Sapko Street in Dublin City and is possibly the most photographed statue in the capital. Jen Reynard, Dublin artist and statue sculptor, completed their works on the Molly Manor Stout in 1988. Her statue is based on the popular folk song about a street trader called Molly Malone, who sold fish, chuckles and muscles from her will and died of a fever at young age. The spire of Dublin is an iconic structure was commissioned as a celebratory symbol of Dublin entering the new millennium. The project was completed in 2003 amidst mixed feelings from the public many of whom saw the multi-million dollar price tag as exorbitant. Another monument is the statue of Charles Stuart Parnell. He was an Irish nationality politician who served as a member of parliament from 1875 to 1891. The monument features his famous words, no man has a, fight, has a right to fix the boundary to the march of a nation. To say to his country, this first share to go and on further. It is commonly joked joke in Dublin that the statue was constructed to point in the direction of Rotunda Hospital, which was once Dublin's main maternity hospital. The humor begins that Pernell was encouraged.